Good morning or good afternoon to all of you. I'm Monia Santini, researcher of the CMCC Foundation on Climate Center, and in particular of the research division that studies the impacts of climate on agriculture, forests, and ecosystem services. Welcome to today's webinar, which is part of the CMCC webinar series, which is focused on heart and a hotly debated topic, the effects of the consumption of palm oil on health and the impact of its production on the environment. The context of this debate, you know, shows that there is less awareness of the social and economic aspects of the production of palm oil. That's why CMCC carried out an in-depth study, also as part of the Sustainable Development Goals UN Agenda, focusing on eight of the 17 SDGs, those relating to the social, cultural and economic component of the territories where this product is grown. To tell us uh, the findings and to answer your question, we have Maria Vincenza Kiriako, whom we all know as Cinzia and Matteo Bellotta, both authors of the study. And finally, there will be conclusions drawn from Francesca Ronca, Secretary General of of Union Italiana per l'Oro di Palma Sostenibili that provided unconditional support to the study. Prior to that, some words on the CMCC Foundation. which is a research center that deals with conducting studies and performing analysis and development models on the climate system and its interactions with the ecosystems and society so as to produce results useful to formulate adaptation and mitigation policies which are uh, founded on robust research and stimulate sustainable growth and the protection of the environment. The CMCC Foundation is organized according to thematic centers based in Lecce, Caserta, Viterbo, Sassari, Bologna, Venezia and Milan with research divisions that deal with the various aspects uh, relating to climate uh, from ocean and atmosphere to interactions uh, with the sea and risk assessment and possible solutions for the environment, for the economy and for society. All of this as part of mitigation and adaptation. This organization makes it possible to face uh, in a multidisciplinary way several themes uh, taking account of the relations uh, between the natural world and physical processes and the anthropic component. Finally, but not less important, CMCC is active in raising the awareness of people through scientific dissemination to communication through events, articles and interactions, as well as, equally important, the education and training of the youth who are excited to world work with climate. Prior to beginning, some pieces of information on the platform for the webinar, the audio and video are off. However, you can take part in the Q&A session using the ad hoc chat. Also, the webinar will be in Italian, but it is possible to use simultaneous translation into English that can be used through the ad hoc button on the Zoom platform. Bear in mind to mute the original speaker so that there won't be interferences. For those of you who cannot stay with us today, wholly or in part, it's going to be registered and recorded and it's going to be circulated through the channels of the CMCC Foundation, including YouTube. To conclude, the next webinar will be on the 29th of June at 12.30 and it's going about hail modeling with a machine learning approach. Now the floor goes to Cinzia who will tell you something about the work done and then we can start the webinar. Enjoy! Thank you! 
Thank you, Monia. Uh, thank you for the introduction, and I'd like to thank all of the participants. Uh, there are so many, I'm so happy. A couple of words to reinstate what Monia introduced about the importance of palm oil. We know that palm oil has a key role for the environment because in the past decades, it had an important responsibility in terms of loss of some important habitats like uh, bogs and forests, especially in Southeast Asia, like Indonesia and Malaysia. So on this, uh, there is a, a, an established debate in, uh, in terms of science and also considering the media and the civil society, there are some disagreements. Another important theme is the impact on health and nutrition of palm oil, because palm oil is a very important ingredient also of some agrofood products of the food sector. And we as Italian consumers or European consumers find these products more often than not at the supermarket when we uh, buy products. And we've noticed over the last few years uh, the proliferation of a number of uh, products claiming palm oil free. This is to tell you that also the impact on health and nutritional uh, aspects is a hotly debated uh, theme relating to palm oil. But like Monia said in the introduction, we have uh, little information in terms of science and debate in the civil society on the social and economic impact, most especially with respect to the local communities where the palm oil uh, plantations are so important. So CMCC, together with Unione Italiana, uh, per l'Ol di Palma Sostenibili, decided to conduct uh, this analysis by analyzing the existing studies that can provide us indications on this, i.e. on the social and economic impacts connected to the production of palm oil, trying to also, whenever possible, to make a distinction between these impacts, I mean, with the traditional or more sustainable production, including in relation to the SDGs. So now the floor goes to Matteo, who can tell us how this analysis was produced and which the findings, the key findings have been. And I invite you, including during the presentation done by Matteo Bellotta, to write any remarks or questions through the chat. And then we will have a session at the end of the presentation to answer your questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Give me a second to start the video. So once again, hi, everyone. I'm Matteo Bellotta. And uh, like my colleague said, in particular with Marie Vincenza Chiriaco and Lucia Perugini, I dealt with the drawing of this review, i.e. analysis on palm oil. I will try and share my screen with you. There we go. So, um, like Cinzia said, the crops that led us to analyze these publications are related to the little discussion on the social and economic impacts of the production of palm oil. The main debate of last years has been on the environmental impacts of the production of palm oil and in particular on biodiversity. But little has been discussed on the social and economic impacts of the production of palm oil. Our analysis has considered um, the literature starting from 20 to, uh, 10 to, 20, to uh, 20, so about 10 years, uh, with a view, like my colleague said, to understanding what could potentially be the contribution of palm oil and the impact on these selected indicators for the review with an emphasis and a main focus on the schemes of sustainability. We wanted to investigate the scientific literature to see how it talks about the 
production and sustainable production schemes as part of the SDGs and the contribution towards achieving the SDGs. The SDGs belong to the 2030 agenda of the UN. There are 17 in all. And out of these 17 SDGs, for the selection of the 82 publications, we have picked eight SDGs uh, strongly related to social and environmental impacts. So, no poverty, zero hunger, health and well being, quality education, water and decent work and reduced inequalities as well as clean water and sanitation and gender equality. The methodology was that of keywords through Google Scholar as a search engine. Well, the use of the keywords on this slide quite obviously has led to viewing a huge amount of documents, including a selection, most especially, of the literature that presents references to the themes of the eight SDGs that we presented in the previous slide. So, I mean, one or multiple SDGs in the same publication. So, this analysis has led to the selection of the 82 publications. Out of them, We've carried out an initial analysis based upon the type and manner of production being investigated in the publication, the geography, i.e. the geographic area of the production of palm oil. As you can see from the numbers, we have analyzed many more scientific articles and the production of traditional oil or unspecified production of oil, i.e. Uh, presumably traditional production of oil, um, this amounts uh, to over half of the publications and then also the area of production uh, considering the percentages of the production of palm oil, 88% comes from Malaysia and Indonesia, but we've also analysed uh, the correlation with the main worldwide producers. And then we've also tried to give an overview and a visual impression, so to speak, of some of the numerical findings and most especially the timeline and number of publications. And in particular, we have focused on the studies, the 82 studies, and in particular those that, with respect to the themes of every SDG, presented a very positive or very negative uh, impression because I mean it's true many studies uh, present both impacts i.e. positive or negative but you know in graphic terms uh, this uh, wouldn't have added anything uh, to the chart uh, most especially with the spheres so on the x-axis we've uh, considered the decade I mean the time and on the other axis the positive or negative impact and the distance of the various uh, spheres does not represent a degree of impact. I mean, the farther away you are from the axis, you can't say that you have a more positive uh, impact. It's just, you know, artwork to include the eight SDGs on the same line. Here you can find the publications of uh, the same SDG and uh, the size of the sphere is the quantity of publications uh, which by the way you find also at the bottom of the image to give you a visual image of how the quantity of publications uh, relates to an sdg of the last decade this is a, an initial visual impression like SDG 8 economic growth and development of decent work conditions well the impact is overly positive and the number of studies has grown over the years as compared to the same color for the positive impacts where there are fewer publications on this SDG with evidence of negative impacts. And for every one of the SDGs, 
it is possible to see over the years the number of publications. One more example, SDG 10, the green one, i.e. reduce inequalities. Well, in this case, the, there are few positive impacts in terms of number of publications that have grown over the last years with negative impacts about this SDG. These are the findings that I've already briefly touched on to explain the chart. Here I'm just telling you which SDGs have been focused on in terms of publications of the years and this also tells you that of the last years there's been a trend that is due to the fact that social and economic aspects have had a hotter debate from 2016 onwards. We've done the same thing here, but this time round, considering only the publications that show the sustainable production system, there are 18 relating to sustainable production and 12 comparing sustainable and traditional production or highlighting aspects of both production but we only focused on the sustainable production so um, there are about 30 publications that we have uh, analyzed with the same method that i explained to you a moment ago and they are either above or below the x-axis and here it is even clearer that the publications that show a positive impact of the certification schemes are more numerous and the size of the spheres as well is bigger as compared to the previous scheme with a high concentration as you can see here over the last years and considering that the SDGs were established in 2015, well, probably the focus on the themes has grown over the last few years. Moreover, we have delved into each of the SDGs, reporting the most evident and general themes because uh, every publication analyzed uh, at times digs into specific aspects that it's not possible to report more generally. You can also see here that in red you will find the possible negative or adverse impacts uh, and in bold, the positive impacts. In general, you can see that as regards SDG 1, no poverty. The analysis of publications shows that palm oil is a source of income that determines a social and economic development of, of local communities. And many reports the lowering in the number of cases of poverty considering all of the countries of the publications i mean this number is lower compared to the national average and the fact that there are other species favored the growth of small farmers and certification schemes slow down the growth of poverty rates because more often than not no one talks about decreasing the poverty rate but slowing it down rather and one of the negative aspects is the cost for small farmers so much so that almost all of the certified sustainable palm oil comes from the certification of big business rather than small farmers. As regards SDG 2, Zero Hunger, well, the review highlights food security. And these improvements 
very much depend on the efficiency of the internal market. So they very much change, even though one should point out that they also depend upon the local situation, the availability of food and market efficiency. And here again, the fact that there are several crops, like in the case of SDG1, this is a way to mitigate the threats coming from food non-security. But the main threat is monoculture or single crop cultivation, which highlights the dependency of small farmers on this culture. One more risk highlighted is land grabbing and soil use, i.e. the fact that most especially in the case of monoculture, subsistence agriculture has less possibility to use the soil and in some geographies you know that this is important. As regards health and well-being SDG 3, this is not very much considered, but um, as you can see, it's very much connected to SDG 1 and 2. So the performance of the top three SDGs is connected. I mean, if you reduce poverty, you can improve access to food and health and well-being. So there's a very strong interconnection. And then access to healthcare services is more often than not emphasized, including because some companies establish healthcare facilities and infrastructures for workers or roads and similar infrastructures to kind of, you know, compensate the use of land for the purposes of cultivating palm oil. Quite obviously, this improvement is more visible when sustainable production schemes are applied. The negative aspects on health, as you will see, will be connected to SDG 8 relating to decent work and economic growth. And this, you know, is connected to, you know, uh, cumbersome work conditions and the use of chemicals and the lack of insurance in uh, accidents at the workplace. And this means uh, big issues for workers. So in terms of uh, family health, household health and related uh, services, they are a sort of set up and there's been an improvement. So in the case of workers specifically, the um, conditions are a criticality. There's been no such improvement. As regards education, this is connected to the previous SDG because, uh, you know, for compensation purposes, companies often build um, schools for the education of the children of workers who work in uh, palm oil plantations and more often than not this uh, is not accompanied by the correct education of the workers in the plantations so as regards training and education of workers used in palm oil plantations this is you know, a gap, but it would facilitate uh, the addition of innovation and innovative elements like technologies and more sustainable development schemes. So, you know, education, you know, is a criticality on which the palm oil supply chain has not yet taken decisive action. As regards uh, gender equality, as the G5, as you can see from the color of the bullet points, uh, there's a long way to go. And the conditions of women, quite obviously, are not the best. And women are used most especially for occasional activities and hazardous activities like the application of fertilizers. Moreover, in economic terms, uh, there is a salary gap vis-a-vis -vis men. So women's salaries are lower than the salaries of men working in the plantations. And, you know, men's salaries are already not the best, as we will see with SDG 8. So there is more vulnerability for women working in plantations. And as regards uh, 
parents' leaves and related indemnities or maternity leave and lactation leaves, they're not the best. The only pluses have been found by some publications on the conditions of women in Africa and South America. probably because of the starting site-specific conditions in terms of uh, education and implementation of palm oil conditions uh, are important. One of the possible solutions uh, is to improve women's conditions, including uh, through some schemes like those that have uh, introduced specific measures for gender equality as part of the palm oil supply chain. That will be a beginning, you know? They're already implementing this, but for the time being, the results are not well visible. The same holds true for water and sanitation, SDG 6. Essentially, there are some issues because like the use of pesticides, uh, more often than not, uh, causes uh, the pollution of the aquifer and more often than not, the water is used for plantations and so is not used for the subsistence agriculture of local communities. So, here as well, we can say that the situation can and must be improved from the point of view of the production and processing of oil palm because the discharges of oil mills more often than not cause a degradation of the aquatic ecosystems and the sources of water close to the communities. And here again, sustainable produ production is seen as being a beginning and a possibility to improve the supply of clean water for the communities. And here you can see some of the certification schemes that provide for this type of criteria to protect the use of water. With regards SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, this SDG has to be split into two major themes. And as we will see in a moment from the colors, these two are contradicting topics because economic growth in the countries and communities where palm oil is cultivated is one of the main aspects. I mean economic growth is an objective factor that has been found in many of the publications that we have analyzed. But this, like we said, and as anticipated in SDG 5 on gender equality, this is not matched by appropriate conditions because work conditions are cumbersome and the salary more often than not is not proportioned to the work carried out by workers in the plantation. So here again, sustainable production schemes are identified in the publications as a possible solution or one of the possible solutions to improve this condition thanks to the introduction in recent years of some criteria that protect work and decent work. As regards the last SDG that we have analyzed, when I talked about the chart, I touched on SDG 10, reduced inequalities. This is one of the major issues that we've identified in our review. And these inequalities, more often than not, are seen in the publications as a contraposition between men and women, big landowners, and the company. So there is a dichotomy. And more often than not, this is part of the social and political contexts that are, you know, specifically connotated. 
But in any case, the cultivation of palm oil does not help solve this type of dichotomy. I mean, it does not improve these inequalities. And as a result, here again, the informed consent, for example, is an option through the implementation of sustainable schemes. This at least would start decreasing the inequalities relating, for example, to the salaries of small producers as compared to big business. And access to capital is one more issue that does not help reduce these inequalities. So, based upon the specific analysis of all of the SDGs, we have tried to derive uh, conclusions, including general conclusions, and uh, most especially, you know, the main ones. One of these, for example, is the strong interconnection with SDG 1. I mean, all of the SDGs are interconnected, but in particular, and this is in blue, i.e. positive, or red, i.e. negative, SDG 1 is the one that is most interconnected with the other SDGs that we have considered in our review. So as you can see on this slide, up on screen, also economic growth, i.e. SDG 8 has been split into economic growth, which has a positive impact and decent work. And in this case, instead, we see that the impact is negative. So the fact that this SDG has two peculiar aspects has been focused on. Instead, we have seen that sustainable production has a greater impact. I mean, it generally can have a positive impact on all of the SDGs considered, but the main impact is on the co-benefits, potential co-benefits coming from sustainable production, i.e. health and well-being, education, quality education, and clean water and sanitation. So in this case, sustainable production could have a stronger impact as compared to the impact on the other SDGs considered. Some general comments. Well, it supports economy and gives access to food. And instead, we've also found big criticalities. I mean, the ones that I have illustrated before. I mean, conflicts and then access and ownership of land is a hot debate for the time being. and the production of palm oil still has a negative impact. And then gender inequality and decent work conditions. I mean, on these three themes, we will have to invest a lot and improve, and maybe in the future, the literature can investigate further on these three criticalities that we have found. Also, we have to consider that all of these indications are general indications, quite obviously. And uh, site-specific ones instead have to be contextualized with the analysis of the individual publications that dig deeper down. But I mean, with this review, we wanted to provide a general overview of the situation relating to the impacts of palm oil on the eight SDGs considered. You can find the publication at this internet address written on the cover of the publication. With that, I'm done and I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank you, Matteo, for this crystal clear presentation of the findings of this analysis. Some questions are coming up. Some refer to the schemes of the certification that are somehow connected to the sustainable production of palm oil. 
I have understood from this analysis that the most sustainable of productions, which are somehow certified by the multiple sustainability schemes, I mean, these productions usually have a more positive impact in relation to the various SDGs. One question, is it possible to tell about the approach allowing these sustainability schemes like RSPO to uh, guarantee sustainability of production? And I would add, is there a clear reference on the part of these schemes to the SDGs or, I mean, the principles and criteria are directly uh, connected to the different SDGs. So what is the connection between the certification schemes and the achievement of the SDGs, according to you? So as regards the schemes, the most widely analyzed and the most present in the publications is RSPO. Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil. It does not clearly, openly refer to SDGs, but I mean, you can infer it has seven principles, and each of these principles is connected, so to speak, and potentially has an impact if that principle were applied to that scheme. So it potentially has an impact on at least one of the SDGs considered. So all of the RSPO principles potentially, if applied, could have an impact on production. Quite obviously, the publications talked about RSPO or other certification schemes in terms of impact in the event of an analysis or also a potential solution. Because more often than not, some publications identified the problem and suggested a possible solution. So since these schemes, apart from the RSPO that dates back to 2004, the other schemes have become more and more well established over the years. And I believe that also the publication in 2015 of the SDGs, I mean, all of these is facilitating or promoting the application of all of this. So results wise, probably we'll have to wait But we can say that it is very clear that either potentially or in fact, these schemes can have a positive approach and impact. Okay, thank you. One more question, somehow still related to certification schemes. How many annual controls are done by the certifying entities with certified companies? Is there an adequate relationship and which are the criticalities? So I just wanted to specify that we've done a review of the scientific studies in existence. So we didn't carry out direct action on the manners of certification. Matteo, would you like to add something that you found in the analysis? Well, quite obviously, we dealt with the fact that in the publications, there were indications on sustainable or non-sustainable production or a potential application of schemes or non-application of schemes. The focus on the functioning of the schemes has been done when we found something in the publication, but I mean, those were specific features. Many times site specific or relating to a peculiar condition. So at the end of the review, they were not considered. As regards to the functioning and specificities in the functioning of our SPO, maybe Francesca, if she wants, can add something on this. Okay, for now, no more questions. I don't know if uh, someone has, uh, you know, some curiosities and would like to write down something to us. And in the meantime, I would like to emphasize one aspect. We have seen 
that in general, sustainable production has better effects on society and the economy. But I would like to know and to understand if from this analysis you have found different effects and impacts of production, maybe based on the conditions of the local communities, the starting conditions. In the initial slides, you've shown that the studies analyzed refer to different geographies. So, have you found a different effect in different geographies? I mean, maybe positive, but with a different degree or negative, but based upon the static condition of the local communities. And this for the various SDGs, like two and three, like zero hunger, health and well-being, or five, gender equality. And uh, there were many red bullet points, so negative ones. I mean, according to you, do you believe that there is a difference depending upon the geographies or the starting conditions of the local communities? Well, yes, there are differences. And the ones that have been emphasized and on which we have focused relate to the pre-palm oil conditions. This has an impact on SDG 1 and 2, i.e. poverty and hunger, access to food. We have seen that in the communities that had subsistence economy or agriculture, especially with the monoculture, with Malum Oda, the benefits were very little or zero as regards food security and access to food, and there's been a worsening. The opposite is true for the communities that were already used to finding in the market their food. So without subsistence uh, agriculture, but that we're already used to the market laws, so to speak, to find food. So the advent of oil palm causes economic growth. So probably as compared to before, this has increased income and, you know, the buying capacity has grown on the market. And this per se is a big difference. One more difference relates to the initial site-specific conditions, which are very important. And in the case of gender equality, we have seen that the only positive impacts are reported by studies on Africa and South America, where probably the condition of women was seen as being better as compared to the static conditions as compared to other geographies like Malaysia and Indonesia. So, yes, the starting conditions are very important and quite obviously the impacts do change and can be bigger or smaller as compared to the starting conditions. And this intensity, you know, can only be measured by a specific study on that specific, specified geography. Okay, thank you. In the meantime, we got some more questions like, one curiosity, are there any practical steps for consumers to recognize more or less reliable certifications. In general, what can consumers do to make more sustainable choices? People talk about eliminating palm oil, but this is not the solution, according to me. I can partly answer. Because palm oil is an ingredient of many products, so in reality, it's not found as such. If we talk uh, food stuff, so but it's an ingredient of finished products. So in point of fact, usually don't buy certified palm oil. So you should be careful that the final product has chosen to use sustainable palm oil. And for sure, the elimination of palm oil is not probably the solution. And this is not the topic of this webinar, by the way. But there will be more webinars on this topic. We will also address the replacement uh, with other oils and actually the elimination of palm oil uh, appears to not be the solution. 
However, the question is how to recognize more or less reliable certifications. Well, here again in this analysis, Matteo, I don't know if we've found studies that could talk about the reliability or no reliability of certifications, but in any case, those that we've examined usually have a fairly stringent standards, so we can say that they're all reliable. I don't know, however, if we have this analysis. Well, we've carried out a numerical analysis, so in terms of uh, presence, the RSPO is uh, the one that is uh, most cited in the various publications. Uh, there is also the MSPO, the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil, and the ISPO, the Indonesian one, but the RSPO is a multi-stakeholder certification that considers the entire supply chain of palm oil. Well, quite obviously, the review didn't want to delve into the specific mechanisms of each of the certification methodologies. However, quite obviously, what we've seen clearly is that the RSPO is the one that is uh, potentially indicated as the most widespread certification scheme. Well, the reliability, it's up to other studies probably to say so. But for sure, the most widespread, yes, it is in the publication that we've analyzed. So, to help consumers, we can say that uh, if you buy foodstuffs, uh, it's difficult to say this. However, one more question. Are there any policies that can uh, drive the palm oil industry to a better avenue. Well, some of the standards you mentioned, like the MSPO or ISPO, are government-based standards. So, it's something relating to the commitment of countries and governments. And the analysis has shown that many governments are committed in order to try and create political local drivers so as to push uh, sustainability of the production of palm oil. So, for sure, there are political uh, instruments and they are being implemented in Southeast Asia and many are aligned with the governmental policies. So, let's say that the issue for final consumers can be fixed upstream if there are policies pushing for more sustainable productions. And this will mean more likelihood of finding sustainable palm oil in our foodstuffs that we eat. So, this for sure is a good strategy. One more question. Did we consider product quality in the standard and the certified supply chain. I mean, is the product healthy for consumers? Well, in fact, we did not delve into nutritional aspects. But Matteo, can you confirm that many of the principles of sustainable certifications also refer to less use of chemicals and pesticides in the field and are somehow connected to a healthier product? Yes, exactly. This has been emphasized. Like uh, Cinzia and Monia said at the beginning, nutrition and environmental impacts are the ones on which there is broader literature, most literature actually. So probably in order to assess the impact, we would need uh, an ad hoc review on this aspect. Instead, we have focused on other aspects in our review, like health related, but for the entire supply chain. I mean, we've not said if palm oil is good or bad. SDG 3 that talks about health and well being, well, it's, you know, in general for the household and the community and infrastructures and facilities to support the general health of a community rather than focusing on the physical health aspects, strictly speaking. The last question, I think, because we're running out of time. 
Amongst the studies analyzed, do you refer to the specific standard for uh, small producers developed by RSPO in 2019? The new standard deals with an approach to facilitate the participation of small producers. Yes. There is an indication on this. Well, that standard was established, I mean, that criterion was established in 2019. So the publications that talk about this type of approach are not so many. We have considered a decade of publication, so we haven't found a strong presence of this standard and uh, the possible results of its application. It's a very young standard. I mean, it was established recently and also the RSPO criteria were renewed in 2018. So the effects of these standards uh, will probably be seen in one decade. We will have to wait one more decade, hopefully less than that. But then, you know, specifically in terms of uh, all of the aspects of this standard, well, here again, like in the other cases, we have found its presence, but we did not judge the substance because it's, it was not our goal to do so. Okay. So having come thus far, the floor goes to Francesca Ronca, who can draw a short conclusion relating to this webinar. Here I am. Hi, good afternoon to all of you. First of all, I'd like to thank Cinzia and Matteo for accompanying us in our journey through the literature of the last decade that has analyzed the impacts of palm oil in terms of society and economy. If you don't know me, even though Moni has already introduced me, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm the Secretary General of the Italian Union for Sustainable Palm Oil, Francesca Ronca. Give me a second. So the union was established in 2015 at the initiative of a group of industry companies and associations of the palm oil to promote the culture of sustainability in the supply chain. in general, as shown in today's webinar, I mean environmental, social, economic and nutritional sustainability. And this takes me back uh, to the fact that we are focused on the SDGs. The SDGs are a focus for us. This is a list of some of the companies that are our members and we have some important trade associations that are somehow connected to the palm oil supply chain and we also have support members to environmental associations which share our goal i.e that of pushing towards the transition of the Italian and other markets towards the exclusive use of sustainable palm oil, which essentially we define like this, an oil that has known and traceable origins produced without converting forests and respecting high conservation value ecosystems but with practices that respect high carbon forests and respecting the value of box, not using wildfires which, you know, are caused by men, so arsons. We're talking about arsons in this case. I mean, not wildfires proper caused by climate. And quite obviously, sustainable palm oil also has the goal of protecting the rights of workers, local communities and populations, respecting uh, uh, preventive informed consent. So any activity connected to the development 
of uh, palm oil plantation has to be done in full compliance with these principles and with the full respect of the representatives of the local communities and all of this has to be done jointly with them and we have to protect their rights, land, habits, access to natural resources and ecosystemic systems and quite obviously we also have to respect the ownership right on land and finally we have to promote the development of small independent farmers and producers. So we had uh, a question from participants. Uh, this is the answer. We do have uh, a standard uh, or better precise guidelines uh, providing for the application, uh, personalized application for small producers of the certification scheme because this can facilitate access uh, to more sustainability, taking account uh, that uh, essentially they are less able to bear the costs of certification. Like Matteo said a moment ago, with this study that has been presented to us today with this webinar, essentially we have seen that most of the studies analyze agree on the fact that palm oil plays a crucial role for supporting the economy and subsistence of local communities in producing countries. And many times has it been said that the adoption of sustainable palm oil production schemes on top of protecting the environment and biodiversity also allows to improve the social and economic impact indicators. Criticalities have been emphasized, in particular the literature has shown that the aspects on which it is necessary to work more are gender equality and inequalities and the distribution of benefits in general, as well as issues connected to the protection of workers. And it is uh, through the ongoing improvement of certification standards uh, that uh, there is a continuous uh, ongoing fine tuning like the RSBO certification scheme. Every five years, the practice provides that there is a substantial update. Uh, based upon the evidence gathered during the previous period, including the studies that verify the annual impacts. And this is useful to build an avenue of improvement. And the latest radical update has brought about a significant advance in terms of uh, the protection of people, uh, the planet uh, and prosperity. And this occurred in 2018. Quite clearly, now we're going through the implementation of this. And actually, Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Francesca. We can also see a slide up on screen. I don't know if you want to move on. Yes, but I've lost control of the slides. Okay, there we go. So, as I was saying, these essentially are the principles and criteria of our SPO. I've seen in the chat that there was a question to understand that how certification schemes are capable of meeting the requirements of the SDGs. And this is a case in point. This represents it. And in the report, this is explained in detail. But this slide represents the seven principles and criteria. I mean, there are many more criteria, but these are the seven basic ones 
underlying uh, the certification system for producers, uh, growers. And these seven steps, uh, in this case, we've only focused on social and economic aspects, but as you can see, principle one and the underlying criteria are very useful and relate to the ethical nature and transparency and respect of rights as well as the optimization of productivity and three for example is positive impact and resilience because quite obviously if you create a resilient productive and efficient system this has a positive economic impact on uh, the community and the local industry. But on top of this, uh, it also is an incentive to embrace uh, sustainability because you can see that there is economic return from this. There are studies uh, that show that a certified plantation on average has uh, more profitability by almost 30% compared to a traditional plantation. Along the way, we also analyze the various uh, RSPO principles, all of which in any case are analyzed in the CMCC report. As regards criticalities, I wanted to show you these infographics where, not by chance, we have represented the areas in which, also in the studies analyzed, we have found the need to do something more. Like Matteo said, the studies cover a decade. And as you can see, essentially, On the outside, we have represented the RSPO principles that have an impact, uh, for example, on gender equality or decent work and reduction of inequalities. And the certification scheme recently intervened as regards gender equality, for example, with the practical guidance on gender inclusion, which is a tool that makes it possible for companies that start this avenue to take actions to give more economic opportunities to women and women entrepreneurs, which entails protection, including the protection of the rights of women. The same holds true for decent work and related aspects. In the chat, Francesca Morgante, or maybe, no, she referred to smallholders, but for example, recently guidelines were approved for the implementation of a decent living wage. So there are guidelines which are provided and then application is required of certified companies to ensure equal conditions of work and salaries based upon the local conditions. So, not just salaries, but also additional services and benefits which are granted to workers in terms of access to education for families, access to healthcare facilities, and many more things like in accident insurance and more. As regards inequalities, it is important to point out and remind the fact that there is a specific policy for the protection of human rights and uh, the defenders of human rights. I mean, all of those who are protected when they decide talk about certain issues in their working environment, which can damage their rights on the workplace. So you know 
union representation systems uh, are implemented uh, and there is some sort of protection uh, of, uh, so to speak, whistleblowers. Because more often than not, uh, how shall I put it? They face difficulties uh, when they talk about uh, some issues. And so there are specified policies on this. And quite obviously it is uh, absolutely required of all companies that free prior informed consent is used if this is an impact on local populations. Uh, we are running short of time. Oh, okay, okay, no worries. Anyway, I think that the slides will be circulated here we have summarized some more things and the only thing we can invite you to do is to take a look at our website. On our website there is a tool that we have recently developed and please visit our website and explore this tool. This tool allows you in turn to explore not only the impacts of sustainable palm oil in terms of social and economic impacts, but also the environment and people. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca, for these Final remarks. Uh, we keep receiving questions. Unfortunately, we don't have time to answer. So please download the report. It's already available on the CMCC website. It's easy to find. In any case, it will be available to answer uh, your questions offline, if any. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you.